George Galloway, Richard Powers' aide, uh, former Labour official, George Galloway specifically referenced Labour and what is happening with Labour in his victory speech. Let's hear some of that. Now our democracy itself is a target. Council meetings and local events have been stormed. MPs do not feel safe in their homes. Long-standing parliamentary conventions have been upended because of safety concerns. So that was a, a little blast of Rishi Sunak from uh, last night. Let's now hear George Galloway and what he had to say. Keir Starmer, this is for Gaza. You have paid and you will pay a high price for the role that you have played in enabling, encouraging and covering for the catastrophe presently going on in occupied Palestine in the Gaza. Keir Starmer has apologised to voters for the Rochdale result, but says he was right to disown the Labour candidate. Well, to reflect on that result and talk about what next for Labour, uh, let's talk to the political commentator and former Labour official Richard Power Saeed. Morning to you, Richard. Good morning, Christo. Lovely to see you. Um, and, and apologies to um, your lovely crew in the... Uh, in the office. I think they had to cope with a lot of chaos uh, on my side just now because my kittens were moving the camera a lot. Oh dear, okay. I don't think that's a euphemism. I think that's actually your cat. Okay, um, George Galloway, um, he uh, has obviously won the Rochdale seat. Keir Starmer said that Galloway only won because Labour didn't stand a candidate. I regret we had to withdraw our candidate. Apologise to voters in Rochdale, but I took that decision. It was the right decision. Um, Obviously, we'll put a first-class candidate, a unifier, before the voters in Rochdale or the general election. Um, I mean, it's a pretty grim result for Labour specifically, isn't it? So, I think it's grim for Labour in the sense that it's a bit embarrassing. And I think, more importantly, it's grim for Labour because Labour wants what's best for this country and for Rochdale. And I think that George Galloway is somebody who seeks to exploit legitimate grievances in a really aggressive and nasty and, and self-aggrandizing way. I, I'm not too worried about the political impact on the Labour Party. I don't think this is going to sort of destabilise Starmer. I don't think it's going to um, have an impact on the general election result. But those aren't the things that matter nearly as much as the interests of the people of Rochdale, the interests of the people of this country. And indeed, I think we should be thinking about people in Israel and Gaza and how in a really unpleasant and weird way, we're sort of talking about the violence on October the 7th, we're sort of talking about Gaza, but we're talking about it through this lens of sort of, how does it impact George Galloway or Rishi Sunak's electoral chances? And I think there's something rather unpleasant about that when 30,000 people have died, probably more. And do you think that Rishi Sunak had a fair point when he said that it was a, a, a pretty dark day for democracy, to paraphrase it. Um, I mean, I wouldn't disagree with that statement in itself, the way that you've paraphrased it. I'm not surprised you've put it in a, a reasonable and, 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 and fair-minded way. But I think that for the Prime Minister to go out in front of Downing Street with the lectern and, and make this kind of speech is the most appalling exploitation, politicisation of of the violence that's happening in Gaza and of the really sad day for the people of Rochdale that we had yesterday. Uh, you know, the Conservative Party have explicitly, you know, in their strategy documents, in their WhatsApp groups, they have explicitly said to each other, we need to be using culture wars issues, issues that divide our country, issues that divide our communities, in order to stay in power. And then, so the idea that they can then start criticizing other people for dividing the country is is just, I mean, it's so obviously hypocritical. But, they but have, they're not... Gonna, I'll just finish, I'll just finish. They have explicitly in their own conversations with each other talked about um, the introduction of voter ID, which makes it more difficult, for, very difficult for, say, people who aren't pensioners but don't have a passport. 
um, to to vote, um, they very explicitly talk to each other about how that's a way to maintain their own vote share because they know that people who are more likely to vote Labour are less likely to have those kinds of documents. And they've even they even uh, gained the system so that uh, older people who've got one particular form of ID will be able to vote, but younger people who don't have um, particular forms of ID won't be able to vote. Yeah, that's, and, you know, that, you're, talking about the, you're talking about the so bus pass. I'm, I'm just going to finish. I'm no, just hang, finish. On, hang on, that hang on. I can't, I, can't, I can't, Richard, I can't just let you keep saying stuff without interjecting now and then and, 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 and calling you up on it. So there's a lot for us to unpack there. The Prime Minister is not the person going onto the streets chanting things that make Jewish people unsafe. The Prime Minister isn't the one who is outside Parliament creating a situation where the Speaker actually completely abandons protocol in order to pacify those crowds outside. You talk about division. Well, I would argue that what the Prime Minister was discussing last night was reactive to the division that already exists. He didn't create that. He's reacting to that. Well, Christo, if you'd asked me about the protests outside of Parliament and 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 uh, uh, and the threats to MPs and things like that, I would have happily spoken about those. But you asked me about the Prime Minister's speech and what I'm saying is, and I will get onto those protests because I'm hearing that you want me to talk about them. But well, that, that was I'm what the Prime Minister was referencing. Surely that's why. If the Prime Minister is trying to make a huge political event out of this theme of undermining democracy and division, then he first needs to get his own house in order. And when the Conservative Party have very explicitly and purposefully trying to sow the seeds of division for their own electoral gain, when they have very purposefully and explicitly tried to undermine democracy for their own political gain, with voter ID by trying to stop younger people, people who are more likely to vote Labour from voting, then the idea that the Prime Minister then goes on uh, on camera and starts complaining about other people doing this, when those other people are definitely having a negative impact, I would say, on our society, but are so much weaker, have so much less power in our society than the Conservative Party has had for the last 13 years. It's just, it's so obviously hypocritical. And more importantly, more importantly for how we judge Rishi Sunak and the Conservatives, it is so obviously trying to exploit a febrile and divided political situation for their own electoral gain. And it shows you what utterly depraved people are currently in charge of the country. OK, just to let you know, though, just to go back to your voter ID point, because I do just want to pick you up on one of them. Um, you mentioned that that older voters can use ID that younger voters can't. And I think you're, what you're referring to is the... the Not the, quite what I said, but OK. But, the, uh, but, but well, OK, explain what you said, because I presume that you were talking about the bus pass thing. So uh, I, I, what I meant to say, I think I phrased it correctly, was that um, older voters will have particular forms of ID and younger people are not going to have those forms of ID, and that and older people are allowed to use them. Younger people, it's impossible. So, what, what would be the example of that then, if I'm not getting that right? No. So, I think the bus pass is one of them, right? Yeah, but you know that for an older person's bus pass, you need to produce an actual passport in order to get that, whereas the younger person's one you don't. So that's why there's a difference but it's between about having the part, but it's about having a passport. Well, why don't those people and, apply for free voter ID then? You can actually get free ID by voting by by applying online. Why why don't people who don't have that ID just just do that? How is that undermining democracy if you're giving people an so option to get thing, free ID? It, so so the question that you're asking there is several steps along the the chain, right? We know that there are lots of people in this country for whom their lives are a bit chaotic, maybe they're finding things difficult right now, maybe they've just got lots of, you know, they've got a few kids and they've got two different jobs. So, like, they're super busy and they're not going to get around to it. We know that's a very normal way to live. I take, you know, my time to answer letters from the council or whatever, and I have a fairly kind of stable and easy life, quite frankly. So it's not at all surprising that loads of people in this country come election day are not going to have ID. The Conservative Party knows that. The Conservative Party has done its research and knows that that's how it works. And they know perfectly well, because there's huge amounts of data showing it, that the people who are less likely to have ID 
are people who are more likely to vote Labour. And so they have explicitly, and they've acknowledged this in their discussions of it, you've had Tories in the House of Lords talk about how this is the case, you've had, I think, even Jacob, Jacob Rees-Mogg, yeah, you know, the Tory of the Tories, described this as gerrymandering. He purposefully and explicitly said, this is an anti-democratic scheme to try to force up the Conservative vote and undermine the Labour vote. So for the person who's in charge of that to then say, oh, um, other people who are much less powerful than me and have much less authority than me are undermining democracy. I mean, he's right, those people are undermining democracy, but he's doing it so much worse. And it's so clearly him trying to exploit a divided and febrile country for his own political gain when he goes up there and talks uh, about okay. it. OK, just so you know, I've just applied for a voter ID pass whilst you were giving that answer. That's how long it took me. Doesn't matter, does it, Christo? The it does. It, it, it took me literally lots, 90 you know, seconds you know, online. Good, you're, you're making, uh, uh, I think, clearly um, sort of like secondary point, right? Everyone knows, everyone listening to this knows perfectly well that most people are not going to end up doing that, and that means loads of people won't have voter ID. It's not about whether they could, it's not about whether they should, it's not about how easy it is, it's about whether they'll do it or not. The Tories know they won't, that's how they'll try to gerrymander the oh, system. All right, Rene okay. wants to jump in. Morning, Richard, how are you? Hey, it's nice to see you, really. And you. Um, there were so many points that I would like to come back on, but I'll just pick a couple. You've just said to Christo that he's making a secondary point. You have just done that because we wanted to talk about Rishi Sunak and whether or not there really is a problem in this country that's undermining democracy, and you've deflected it to Rishi and voter ID. Well, the question I, got No, on. I'm, I'm just going to finish. So, to voter ID, I could deflect as well and say, well, hang on a minute, if we're talking about parties being cynical and, and perverting the course of normal democracy to their own game, that's exactly what Labour did 10 days ago in the Houses of Parliament when they put pressure on the Speaker to override normal process because it didn't suit them to have the vote that the SNP wanted them to do. You know, this is going on all of the time in the Houses of Parliament. It's not just the Tories, it's both of them. And that's why people are losing their faith. So I think that most people, lots of different people, will have very different interpretations of what happened in the House of Commons 10 days ago. But I think most people will hear you try to compare the Conservatives having an explicit electoral strategy for dividing the country and undermining democracy on the one hand, and then they'll hear you compare I don't that believe they with, have that. Well, yes, I can guess that that's <laughs> the case. Um, and then they'll hear you compare that with uh, the Labour Party changing the wording of, an, of a motion in Parliament so that it mentions the October the 7th hostages and says that we condemn that. That is that not what they did, Richard. They, they changed the wording well, they, of a motion so that Keir Starmer did not see half of his party resigning again. And you know that. So but the, the, but the again, issue... but, well, you're making my point for me, Renee, aren't you? People will hear you compare what Keir Starmer did versus what Rishi Sunak's doing, and they'll say, like, any criticism you can make of Keir Starmer and the Labour Party doesn't even compare to those criticisms of Sunak. So it's it's, it's like okay. it's not comparing apples with oranges. It's comparing sure. apples with an orange. Factory. But what we've just done in this fifteen-minute segment is we've actually just moved the debate away from what's going on our streets every day that are making, that is making people in this country feel scared, and feel that democracy is not working for them anymore. Well, you asked me about Sunak's speech and I told you how exploitative and hypocritical it was. And I'm really happy to talk about what's happening on our streets as well, if you want to ask me about that. Chris, well, I, 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 I think I did remember about when I asked you about the division and I said that it wasn't Rishi Sunak that's going out. And, and then you asked the speak, so I didn't have time to talk about that. But I'm really happy to, if you want to ask well, me we're that. We're out of time now, but we'll get you on to talk about that again.